Wednesday. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHMX Coyote Podcast, brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah here with Craig and Petey. How are you guys doing on this fine Wednesday morning? Well, we're day drinking, so... The beer is already yeah, open. Here we question. go. I got mine. You, I'm still drinking coffee. Oh, my gosh. But it's... but. Well, we'll get to the, the relay, well, but it's PD and I, that's, this is past midday. Yeah. That's, that's, that's true. We've literally, been up we get since up, 5 a.m. We get <laughs> up like adults over 50, so for, yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'm still sleeping. What? Bre- my, my son said breakfast at noon. Like, really? <sighs> First sign Cheers. of the day. <laughs> it's already come. Mm. Cheers. Nothing like a daytime wow. Mm. Nothing like a Let's morning go. coffee as well. Um, by the way, stay tuned. We have some exciting things to look forward to. PD is doing his first oh <sighs> ad read since Manscaped. So stay tuned for that. Coming, I'm sure I'll be here for that. If Dan's soon. kids are listening in the car, I will give you a heads yeah, up. Yeah, we, will, we will give you a heads up when that's coming. But we have other things to talk yes, about today. Do. The NHL trade deadline. It's soon. Can I put my feet up on the table, PD? <laughs> You are allowed. All right, today. I'm going to put my feet up on the table. Yes, I feel like you may. It's one of those days, you may. Um, 23 days until the NHL. 23 trip. days. Whew. It seems far there away, but go. 23 days is going to come like that. Just over three weeks. Wow. Oh. And you can tell because the rumors are swirling. Of course, Craig, you addressed. <sighs> oh look, a Craig side. Craig side. Come on, you guys. We need some more sips of this yeah, beer. Yeah, no, it's right. fantastic. Um, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, you start to see people being social media experts and. You know, trying to connect the dots. It's like that scene from It's Always Sunny with Charlie in front of the wall of all the I I wish we had a camera on me when I talked to Chick about this. I I wish wish we we had had a camera on him, Because his face, he's just like, I know what you're going to ask me. (laughs) It's so good. It's just like that. sometimes uh, I list there in the public eye. They understand that. But sometimes I feel sorry for these guys for the ridiculous rumors that get spread about them. Yep. But... The truth is, we've known it since game one. The Coyotes are sellers at the deadline. That is the goal. That's what they did last season. And there's a number of guys, some we've kind of known all along, but some who've also emerged throughout the course of the season as potential trade trips for the Coyotes. So today we're going to kind of play off of Craig's Die Hard Only article. If you read it, it's on gophnext.com. Yesterday, just the, the guys who kind of are in that conversation what they've provided to the Coyotes, what they could provide to another team, and if we think they'll get traded, just kind of in a early trade deadline preview. So, go. without further ado, let's dive into it. Who are we starting with, Leah? You drive the bus. Let's start with some. Oh, Pete, let's start Pete, with somebody. Wait, Pete, do you have a box of tissues? <laughs> it's not going to happen. You don't I'm think? not going to allow it to happen. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's start with. Don't. By the way. Since we're going to talk about Nick Bugstad, oh. if you haven't watched Petey's Minnesota yes. Man, I, I don't know what you're calling it. I'm calling it Minnesota Man Crush. <laughs> if you haven't watched that video yet, go watch it on YouTube. It's fantastic. It was so much fun. Uh, it was it, fun. My eyes twinkled. Both him of those a guys, bit. Travis Boyd and Nick Bugstad, made sure to stop uh, when I was up for the morning skate on Monday. Made sure to stop and, and say again, I had a blast doing. Oh that. really? So, oh, really? really? So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That makes me feel good because I felt I was infringing on their important time. No, they cool. they enjoyed it. That's awesome. And I, and I, yeah, I said this, yeah, I've fun. said this already. I just, I like that they were also like going along with it. Like yeah. Travis Boyd was saying, and also, did you yeah, know? They like, added it was more really content. Funny. It was, it was really fun. good. We got some love. Mike Rousseau, the great beat writer yeah. in Minnesota, retweeted yeah. Jess Myers, I believe, too. Yep. Still, uh, I'm just going to call him out right here. Ben Hankinson, the agent for both of those players who I know really well and is a Minnesota guy. Yeah. You know, some love, Ben. You could give your guys Even some love because his... you haven't done it yet. I don't know if. You know, Ben Ben and I had this thing. He was broken down on the side of the road one time you when he was about? calling me. And uh, I, maybe that's what happened, Ben. Oh. Maybe you're broken down on the side of the road again. But give you guys some love. We even mentioned his hometown of Edina yep. in the quiz. Yep. That gave away one and of the And you answers. have a connection, right? But Ben actually played played uh, high school all-star teams uh, with wow. his brother. Look at Peter wow. Hankinson. So ben. anyway. There you go. A little Minnesota talk to, yeah. to get us going. And I think Which that, I needed. That I brings know. us into our first guy who's on the trade block for the Coyotes. And it's Nick Bukestad. And yeah. I think, for me at least, he's one that I didn't necessarily see being that guy before the season started. You know, he came in as a veteran player, kind of just a contract filling a role, but he's really proven himself this season. In so many ways, right? They Listen, the, you hear this talked about all the time. When you're in a rebuild and you have young guys on a roster, you need to surround them with quality veterans who 
basically show them the ropes, show them the way to behave, to practice, to to eat, all the things that uh, longtime veterans learn over the course of an NHL career. Nick Bukestad has just been such a positive force in this room. And you know it, when you're around him, he's just... He's just got this light personality. You really like the guy. You can't help but like the guy. That's rubbed off on the room. And and that was a big reason they brought him in. But he's also been a really good defensive center, a matchup center. And he's provided some offense. I mean, we're looking at like maybe a five-year high for him in terms of production as well. So there's a lot of value for Boogie right now. Yeah, one of the things we talked about Buke said over the summer in the offseason when he signed with this team is this team was going to give him the opportunity to play. Mm-hmm. And when he's with the Minnesota Wild, he's in and out of the lineup, and he hasn't had the opportunity to play regular minutes. It's been years. And so I think that was the big thing for him to get acclimated to playing all the time. To your point, gets to the net hard, defends well, does right things in the locker room, and his attitude is infectious. So I think for him, you're looking at teams that are on that bubble that go, okay, and, and I really like Nick Bugstead here. I think he fits here. He can go to a high-end Cup contending team, and he might be a 13th forward. He might be a depth guy. But with a player like Nick Buke said, one, he'll he'll play that role and he'll play a positive influence on the room. But two, if you have anybody going down from forward four to forward 12, he can fit in. He can play on the wing if he has to. He can play middle ice. We've seen that here. He yes. can play center ice. He can fill in your lineup, go up and down your lineup. He can play net front on the power play. But he can also defend. So he's one of those unique pieces that can fit in a lot of places. And believe me, there are teams that need that depth guy. And it's the better teams. It's the teams, it's a Colorado, that they're looking for a bottom nine forward. They, they already have the Rantons and the McKinnons. You're looking at teams like that. Carolina, I think, is going to go for a bigger name. So I don't think it's there. But Colorado might fit. I think Dallas, maybe. But the one that I really like, I like two. I like Nashville because I think Nashville plays the kind of game that he plays, and I think they can add depth forward to a team like Nashville. I think Pittsburgh is looking for a third-line center. They've got the skill. They've got the speed. He sees him as a veteran guy that can fit into that room easily. And maybe just with his, his, his size, I don't know if he's fast enough to play in Boston. I don't know if that's the, the mix they're looking for. So I'm looking for Pittsburgh and the surprise pick, maybe Tampa. I think Edmonton is definitely in the mix for Nick Bukestad. I've, there have been multiple reports on that, so I, I would throw Edmonton in that mix as well. Um, but what I've been told about Nick Bukestad, there are a lot of teams. There may be, there are probably as many teams interested in Nick Bukestad as there are in Jacob Chikrin, and probably more because his, his contract situation and his fits. his cost is lower. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you're talking about a $900,000 contract that's prorated, so he's easy to absorb. Um for most teams, they can bring him in. Um, what could he bring in return? My sense of the market right now is the Coyotes love to get a second round pick. We know Bill Armstrong loves second round picks. That could happen depending on the That's demand, crazy. right? Crazy. I with don't think I would have ever thought With a lot of before. teams, you know, the bidding may get to the point where they land a second round pick, but it may be a third round pick. I think the Coyotes are okay with either of those. Those are rounds where you still feel like you can find really good NHL players. Of all the guys, that are on this list that we're going to talk about today, I think Nick Bugstad is the most likely to be moved because there is that much interest in the market right now. <laughs> but the good news for Coyotes fans is not without the, the, the realm of possibility is that a player like Nick Bugstad moves, plays the playoffs, goes on a run, and re-signs here in Arizona. Yeah, that's exactly that's not, what Michael said. That's not unrealistic because, again, we, we go to those things. I don't think, even if he plays well in the playoffs, I don't think Nick Bute said is a, is a $3 million player in this league right now. I still think he's going to be at a price point that the Coyotes can afford. They love him. He likes it here. Yeah. I think he, he might just have a shortened... A shortened, uh, a shortened stint with the team, make a run for it, get a chance to play in the playoffs and maybe win a Stanley Cup. Who knows? But then come back to the Valley and continue to help develop these players and play a big role in getting this team through their rebuild. Absolutely. Should we move and on? And then we can then keep our eye on Nick Bukestad yeah. again. That'll, that'll be okay with you, right? If he's only gone for a few yeah, months. Yeah, I can live with that. Like, I, can, I can watch him in the playoffs and be excited. Even, even if he's not on the Coyotes, you'll still vote for yes. him to be king, be of, the king of the game every game. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Should we move on to sure. our next guy? Uh, let's stick with Nick's and we'll go to Nick Ritchie, who I think when the season began, he was the, the most obvious choice of the forwards to be moved, um, had a really hot start to the season, has kind of cooled down a little bit. What do you guys think about 
Nick Ritchie. Well, I'm curious about this one because the my sense of the market is that it's cooled considerably on him. There isn't a great deal of interest, but that could change because of Nick Ritchie's skill set. He's got a skill set that I think works in the playoffs maybe better than in the regular season when games get direct. You're looking for net front. You're looking for greasy goals. You're looking for a physical player. He's got all those tools. And early on, obviously, we, we talked about this. He had six goals right out of the gate, and we're thinking, oh, my God, this this guy could really land them something. Well, he, he hasn't had a lot of production uh, since then. He's got nine goals and 21 points on the season. Um, there was a point during the year where Andre Tourney actually healthy scratched him for a few games because he wasn't seeing that physical side that, you know, he's got to engage physically for him to be an effective player. And Andre wasn't seeing that. He told him that. I feel like he's gotten back to that game more. The production ne hasn't necessarily followed, but he is playing a little bit more of that game that they need to see from him. Yeah, I think if the trade deadline would have been in November instead of March, mm -hmm. I think he would have been a hot ticket. He was playing well in the bumper roll and the power play. He was distributing the puck well. He was fighting the back of the net from the power play. Um, I'm not sure, to, to your point, Craig, his play of late maybe is starting to get back on track with that. I haven't seen that inspired Nick Ritchie that was digging up pucks and effective driving the net and moving his feet. I haven't seen that guy for a while. That's going to hurt him. Um, barring injuries to other teams, I think this is a piece that if he does move, I don't think the return is going to be what it could have been yeah. if he would have continued with that. I still think, and I know it... He, they're going to try to move this asset. There's yeah. no doubt about it. If they do, it's not the return. It's going to be fourth, fifth round, and it, he yeah. may be a Coyote till the end of the year. Yeah, it might be a mid-round pick, but I think they would take that in this instance. I, think I, I, I believe think they'll they move would this do. asset. The other thing that's going to make this hard is his contract. Yeah. It's not the same. It's He's got a cap hit of, what, 3.3, I think. Um, the salary is a little lower, but for a lot of these teams, they don't worry as much about the salary as they worry about the cap hit and working him in. Um what might have to happen here and what might have to happen in a few of these deals that we're talking about is the Coyotes might need to take money back um, from these teams that are all cap strapped in order to make things work. That may need to happen for the Coyotes anyway, because if you're moving out a couple of these players that have a significant cap hit, you might drop below the floor yourself. You you still need to be cap compliant after the trade deadline. So there they may yeah. need to take on some salary in, in the short term, whether that's a guy on an expiring contract or a guy who has, you know, a year left. Something like that. Do you see a fit for him anywhere in the NHL? You know, I, I don't know. You've got a, a team like the Calgary Flames who's looking for secondary scoring. They're looking at a big body that can play Calgary Flames-style hockey. They're look, definitely looking for the more. they lost? They're <laughs> definitely looking for more offense. Um, I, I see that as being a fit if they can. Uh, we, we all know Brad for a living. He needs to win. Yep. And and if he's going to be looking for pieces, the problem there is going to be the cap issue again in Calgary. Can they fit the pieces? I see that style of game fitting Nick Ritchie, and he could jump into that team because he has the offense and the ability to be physical. So that's the fit I see for him. All right. Moving on to the next guy. It's Craig's favorite player. <laughs> Don't not to put words in your mouth. It's your Chicago brother. It's Christian Fisher. My guy. This is another one my that guy. makes a tear run down. My face um, to think about Christian Fisher leaving, much like Nick Bukestad, great attitude, great locker room guy, more mm -hmm. of a role player. And has taken some strides offensively this yeah, year, too. Yeah, like he, like he set out to do. So what can what could Christian Fisher bring to a team, and what does the market look like for well, him? Well, I mean, what he can bring is, you know, he's an energy guy. He can kill penalties. I still think he can give you secondary scoring if he gets into a role. I mean, he gets – Fish gets no power play time. He's not put in those situations – He's more of a defensive guy. So I do think he can do some of that if he's put in the, in the the right role or a different role. But he is going to be viewed as an energy guy, a penalty killer, and a guy just such a positive force in the room. However, we can talk about market value, and I'm not sure what the market value is for Christian Fisher because here's the thing. I don't think the Coyotes are moving Christian Fisher. I think they view him as a part of the core. They love the things that we just talked about, they love that he's made some strides offensively. I and He's going to be an RFA with arbitration rights at the end of the season, so that's something to watch. But I think Christian Fisher is a Coyote next season. I want to start this conversation with the good news um, for Coyotes fans. Is I agree with you 100%. I think Christian Fisher is a Coyote. I think he fits here for a lot of reasons, both on and off the ice. The way this team works, playing their... 11-7 formula a lot. You need to be able to play a bunch of different roles 
to fit into to Andre Turney's lineup. And I think Christian Fisher can do that. You can see him be first on the four check. You can see him kill penalties. You can see him be in the defensive zone uh, when they're protecting a lead. You can see them grinding it out in the corner when they're trying to get offense. So I think he does a little bit of everything, and that's why he fits here. We like Christian Fisher a lot because of his fit here. I'm not sure to your point of what the market would demand for a Christian Fisher, but I don't think he's leaving. I, I, I think he just fits here. They need a veteran leadership that believes in the organization, believes in the coach, and believes in what they're trying to do in Arizona, and that's Christian Fisher. Where Be- yeah. Because getting through a rebuild is hard enough. You need someone with a good attitude that works every day and does things the right way, and that's Christian Fisher. So I don't think he'll be a part of the trade deadline for the yeah. Coyotes. And I hope not. And like and just going off that point, too, you know, they're, the Coyotes aren't expected to make a run even next year, and you need that person who's going to help develop all like this surplus of young guys that are – about to come in and and you can you see teams all over the NHL with tons and tons of skill but if you don't have a cohesive locker room every time you look at a Stanley Cup winning team they always say this is a close group of guys we we love each other we love playing for each other and Christian Fisher is kind of that piece that provides the locker room cohesion for this Mm -hmm. team the more interesting thing the angle for Christian Fisher for me is what happens in contract negotiations? Is it, is it another one-year deal and he gets to unrestricted free agency the following year? Or does he try to sign for longer term? I'm really curious how that's going to play out, especially with arbitration rights. Yep, absolutely. All right, those were the forwards. We have one more before we move on to the defenseman because I want to get in the no, one your, goalie. Your split made per- perfect sense. I yes, saw it. Yeah. I want to get into the one goalie on this list. Another major surprise, if you said this before the season, we would have said, what? Because we didn't even have Karel Vomelka making the Coyotes lineup last mm. offseason before, you know, before the 2021 20, season. Joseph Koshinaj. Remember that? Yeah. Name? Who? Right. Um, Karel Vomelka. He's kind of been, especially when he was going through his hot streak, um, and he's still been solid for the Coyotes. His name has been thrown around not just with us, but around North America. Is Karel Vomelka still or has he ever been a p- potential trade piece? Well, it this one's hard to read. If you're if you're looking at a goaltender, you need to know that this guy's demonstrably better than what you have already, and you'd like to have some sort of playoff resume to make that judgment. You don't have it with Vimelka. so how do you know? Now his underlying numbers, they're really good. I know people look a lot of times at goals against and save percentage; those are team stats. I, as you guys know, you probably get sick of me saying it. Goal saved above average, things like that. Goal saved above expected, really, is a great stat. He's sixth in the league right now in that stat. Sixth That's unreal. in the NHL. <laughs> now, he, he faces a lot of opportunities, but he's sixth in the NHL right now in goal saved above expected. That's a good stat. That tells you what Vimilka can do. Does it convince teams that he can do it in the playoffs? Do they? Does, does he have enough body at Evans? I don't know. And the other thing to think about is, like, with, with all those factors – what is someone really going to offer for Vimelka? And is it going to be enough for the Coyotes to say, yeah, okay. I, I think that they have to get a substantial offer for Vimelka in order to do it. And I am I just have a hard time believing this deal could take place. But then I look around the league at some of the teams that are going to the playoffs with what I think are questionable goaltending situations. Like Logan Thompson right now in Vegas, he's being talked about for the Calder Trophy. And I look at it and say, I don't see it. Logan Thompson is not going to be one of my finalists if I'm voting today for the Calder Trophy. His goal saved above expected is a negative. He, he's just playing on a really good team, and he's benefiting from that. It's not a great rookie class, but he's still not in my top three. So I don't know. Does Vegas really want to go to battle with, with him as their playoff guy? There are other teams like, what, what, what about Toronto? Do you like that situation? It, we talk about this every season with the Maple Leafs. Do they really believe that their current tandem is going to carry them deep into the playoffs? Edmonton. We, we just saw who made the uh, all-star game, but Stuart Skinner, is he going to be your guy? I, I I don't know what some of these teams are thinking. Does L.A. have the right mix? There are a lot of teams where I can look at it and say, Vemelka might make sense for them, but is the offer there? Does the GM have enough evidence to say, yeah, we need to go do that because he's, he's definitely better than what we have? Yeah, and I think one of the things when you're talking about goaltenders is when you're in the room and you see that guy play every day, you put a little shine on him, meaning the Coyotes like Vamelka 
better than I think a lot of teams on the outside looking in like Vimelka. And, and here's the reason why. Like it or not, this is Arizona, and they're not on a lot of teams' radar, and Vimelka slips through the cracks. People, He's not an everyday name. When, when he plays nationally, people go, who? So I, I think that's going to hurt him, too. For Bill Armstrong to give up on Karel Vimelka and give him up, he is going to need a large return. And I don't know if teams are willing to, right now, to spend those kind of assets on a goaltender because all of them, all of these teams, even if they don't like their goalie, they have a goalie that they're happy with. The one that you concern yourself with is the teams that have injuries to goaltenders. So yes. keep an it's eye burned. on this for Vimelka. <laughs> Over the next 21 days, if you see a team's top goaltender or even their backup go down with a long-term injury, mm -hmm. then this changes completely. Because yep. now they ask, isn't that big a deal? Because you cannot go into the, the, the NHL playoffs without feeling at least comfortable with your top two goalies. And some teams will get to their third goalie in an extended look at, playoffs. Look at Pittsburgh last year. So yeah. so I think that's one of the things you need to look at. I think there's a goalie, Columbus goalie's Corpus Allo. I think he's going to be the top guy that yeah. people know has played a little bit more, a little more experience than Vimelka. But Vimelka's name is going to come up yeah. because he's played in big games, had a lot of saves. The issue is I'm not convinced that he would be the number one A yeah. guy running into the playoffs. He might be a team's one C or two guy going in the playoffs looking for depth. So Vimelka, in my opinion, to sum it up, stays a coyote unless if all things being cool right now, there's no injuries. He stays here. If there is a major injury between today and the trade deadline, he may move. All right. Well, there, there's so many possibilities. It, it, it makes me a little bit like anxious to think about. So good thing I have some OGs. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'm going to need some OGs to get through the NHL trade deadline. The NBA trade deadline is tomorrow. Our entire office is completely on edge waiting for something dramatic to happen. But when I go home at night, I have OGs. I can take a deep breath. They have microdose. They have sleep edition gummy and... Strawberries and cream is hitting the shelves soon. The flavors are just unbelievable when it comes to OGs. Um, so you can find them at your local dispensary. You must be 21 or older to enjoy. But we love them. Scratch made local. You love them too. Yeah, I was going to ask you a question though. Uh, do you have any inside track on whether OGs is going to come out with a, a St. Patty's Day product? <laughs> We need green OG gum. OGs. Make it happen. OGs Make gummies. It happen. We need green OGs at Craig St. Patrick's Day party. <laughs> I love it. Over under on how many times Craig mentions his St. Patrick's oh, Day party between now and take March 17th. Take the over. If the line is available, <laughs> buddy, take the over. Take the over. I don't know how people found out. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I you it kept it <laughs> such a secret. Oh, What's boy. funny to me, and I know we're getting into the over under on, on on how can you bet on this on DraftKings. What is funny to me is Derek in our office goes, "What? I didn't get invited." I'm like, "Are you out of your mind?" <laughs> like everybody, like he. I just think I saw one of those planes with the Super Bowl ads just flew by with a tag <laughs> party at Craig's. Pretty sure. Yeah, you did actually. <sighs> with the with the traffic patterns for March 17th exactly. and the weather patterns yep, yep. as well. What's the over under? under? Yeah. Yep. Look, there yeah. it goes. There, there it goes. goes. I know. Right now. See? It is. <laughs> Party at Craig's. Oh, man. Take the over. Well, I, I'm thinking a little bit sooner. I'm thinking about my Super Bowl party coming oh. up. I'm, I'm not quite at St. Patrick's Day. We still got the Super Bowl. And I was looking at DraftKings yesterday. Oh, my God, are there so many things to bet on. It is almost overwhelming. It's unbelievable. DraftKings yeah, every Bowl. day this week. Super Bowl bets are nuts. They're so fun. But, yeah, like, you can bet. Great. Like, will a kick hit one of the uprights. Upright. <laughs> right. Like, okay, the sure. Um, just absolutely unreal. Um, and lately, this whole week, DraftKings has been randomly sending boosts. So Sean and I capitalized on a boost the other day. I got one yesterday. You can boost first, like, which team will score first by plus 150. Like, they're just giving you free boosts. So if, if you've been waiting on downloading DraftKings and you or waiting for the right time, this is the right time. Have some fun with it. It's a blast. And... When you sign up with the code PHNX, new customers can bet $5 on the Super Bowl and get $200 in free bets instantly, which is just great. What? I don't know. I don't Nothing. know what's going on with PD. I don't know what's going on either. Um, but only that's only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See those show notes for details. PD, did you get an invitation to Leah's Super Bowl party? 
<laughs> no. Yeah, neither did why, I. Why do you need okay. a pen? I, I, Are you don't making edits? To, I am. To your ad read? Oh, something just boy. came up. So, you guys, stra- <laughs> t- just, this no, is. No, 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 just like anything's going to be a bad pun. Yeah. So just let's let's not talk You're about right. it. I, I don't want to talk speak. about it. I, can't I don't want to talk speak. about it. Okay. Let's move on to the defenseman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Coyotes that's it. That's might it. trade at the NHL trade deadline. The show. The let's show. Talk about back to the, the show. Yes, back to the show. Okay, and we have to start with this guy because yeah. he is the one we've been talking about since. And DP is so excited about the photo we found yes. on there too. <laughs> since last <laughs> summer, it's Jacob Tricker. And I mean, when you think of Arizona Coyotes trade deadline, when you Google top NHL trade deadline pieces. His name is always in that mm. top five, top 10. Jacob Chikrin, we've gone back and forth all year about him. But now that we're just three weeks away, Craig, what is the likelihood that Jacob Chikrin well, gets Based on the players that Jacob Chikrin has recently followed on social media, <laughs> I would say <sighs> that it's Edmonton, LA, or Boston. But, oh, wait, that didn't happen. He's actually been following them for a long time. Um, this one is... Obviously, it's been around for a long time. We were talking about this at the draft last year. I know. I we remember. all thought he was going to be. I remember you and I walking on the street in Montreal talking about yep. this. We all thought. And Jacob Jacob thought. Everybody else thought he was going to be dealt at the draft. And by the way, at the end of last season is when he removed, you know, written references to the Coyotes on his media, uh, social media sites. Because he thought, like all of us, that he was going to get traded. Still has photos of the Coyotes, by the yes. way. So he hasn't removed all references. This is anyway, a Kyler Murray situation. It's. A very complex deal because we, we talked about a lot of teams being cap strapped. So again, with, with, if Chikrin goes, you can bet there's going to be salary coming back. Some they're going to be there's going to be a player coming back to the Coyotes because teams are going to need to fit this number in under their under their cap ceiling. And his cap it is four point six. Uh, again, his salary goes up in the next two years, but that's probably not going to matter to the teams that we're talking about as much as the cap it itself. They'll need to move something back. The other thing, of course, is the ask. And and I know that the the narrative is out there that the Coyotes are asking too much. Well, are they really when Brandon Hagel draws what he got last season? If you look at some precedent, maybe not. When you hear a lot of that stuff, and I listen, realize I, I just cover the Coyotes, but when you hear a lot of that stuff in the media, well, the, the ask is too high. Just remember that that's... GM speaking through media members, okay? This is a negotiation, and they're negotiating through the media. We'll see if it's too high. We'll see if a team is willing at the trade deadline to pay the price for Jacob Chikrin. Another another point I want to make. There's a starting point. There's a starting ask, and and I've written this a few times. It's two first-round picks and a second-round pick or the prospect equivalent of that. These are negotiations, It's not hard, fast. It's either that or nothing. These are negotiations. There's a back and forth. We'll see what happens. There could be other things that equal that package for the Coyotes. It just has to be what Bill Armstrong feels is fair value, fair return for Jacob Chikrin, a guy who, again, is under contract for two more seasons. He's He's having another— He's more than just a rental, which is what you often see at the trade. He's cost-effective. When you look at that cap hit for a top-four defenseman, it's a good number. And he's he's effective. He's productive. He's playing really well this season, as PD and I wrote about recently. So there's a lot to like about bringing Jacob Chikrin in. Of course, the cap is a big deal. And of course, there are a lot of teams out there that are really gun shy about giving up first round draft picks. But Jacob Chikrin's not going anywhere if you're not giving up first round draft picks. I can tell you that he will. they'll, They'll try this again at the draft where we've talked about this as well. The value could come down if a team comes and says, Hey, here's the number 10 overall pick. Then the Coyotes know what they're getting, and it's a high pick. Now you might just take one first-round pick and the you know the second or a, a prospect. Or if you don't get that, Jacob Chicken may be a Coyote again next year. There's a lot to parse here, but there is a lot of value in bringing a player in like Jacob Chicken. And I think there are a lot of teams that are definitely interested in bringing him in. Yeah, I think there's a couple things you brought up there that are really important. First, the ask is there. Everybody knows the ask or the implied ask. And honestly, I think that's going to get paid, whether it is today or at the draft table 
they're going to get what they want of Jacob Chikrin. Or worst case, and this is the worst case, he plays for you again. Yeah, it's and he's one of your bad. leaders on the back end. He, now he's a, another year older, a little more experienced, and he helps lead the team through the rebuild. And that's the worst case. So I, I have to look at a couple things. What are the alternatives? Because there are teams that need guys like this that can help on the back end. You've got we've already we're going to talk about another Coyote defenseman that that, that may be in that. In that shame area, but you look at the the two other defensemen that come up that can score. Klingberg, yeah. you got Dumba. Dumba, I don't believe he's going to leave Minnesota. I think they'll find a way to resign Dumba. I'm not thinking he's going to leave. And if you do, he's a six million dollar cap hit. With Klingberg, he's 30 years old, yep. and, and and Jacob Trigger is 24. Like I know Klingberg can. Their expectations were Klingberg is going to help more in Anaheim than he did. They're ready to cut ties with him and move on and get some assets for Klingberg, but he's 30. And Jacob Chikrin, at his size and strength, provides more and than a player like that. Level. Let's talk about the kid's work ethic, too. There is no question about the time that this guy puts into getting better and, and working on his body. No question. He's 100%. maniacal about it. Yeah, and he's fit, and he's big. And so and you go to oh, you want a strong defense. When you go to Joel Edmondson, he's 29, and he doesn't move. So you get one or the other, or he can have both. And 24, and oh, his cap hits under $5 million. So I still think that he's extremely attractive to everybody. We said he had to come in here and play to get these kind of, you know, get on the ice to show he wasn't hurt anymore, and then provide offense, which he has done. He is still a plus player this late in the season, and he has never been that this late in the season as a Coyote, ever. He's always been a minus player, and, and that's not his fault. You just play di different minutes, and it's, it's difficult. But he's still at a plus uh, for this team. So... I think he will go, but now you got to start looking at where. And, and the teams, we Edmonton and L.A. are coming up all the time, too. But I talked about Calgary. Uh, don't be surprised. It's, it, it, Calgary's another team that's looking for secondary scoring, and they need scoring from the back end. They need somebody that can play a little more physical role. I think you can do that. Boston is another team that name that is going to come up. That fascinates me. Because, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, but, you're fine. But just on the Boston note, as long as we're on it, we thought, hell, their beat writers thought, that Boston was taking a big step back. When I talked to Kevin Paul Dupont on when early in the season when they played the Bruins, he's like, hey, I think they're a seven or eight seed in the East. Well, they're on track right now to set the NHL record for most points in a single season. With, with the makeup of their lineup and the age of some of those players, to me, Boston has to be all in. Yep. This team has a special feel that may not be replicated next season or ever again. You got to go all in. This is their best chance to win the cup. So Boston really intrigues me. And if you're the Bruins, do you care if you're giving up a first round pick the next two seasons? It's going to be a low first round pick. I think that makes a lot of sense if you're the Bruins. Yeah, and you brought up something interesting. There is we talked to Bill Armstrong about this, and when they lost Tage, Tage Thompson in the trade to Saint, when he was at St. Louis, and they had to trade away a young asset like Tage Thompson, he said, "We won the cup. It doesn't matter." Yep. Like, and, and literally that we don't we'll trade everything to win the cup. That's the point That's the is goal. to win the cup. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think Boston is in that situation, too. But with Boston, you talked about their older players. Their window is open now, now and it might close quickly. But I don't think what Boston won't do is I don't think they're looking at uh, O'Reilly, a Tarasenko, a big guy, a big name guy to come in and disrupt What's going right in their locker room? Jacob Trickman doesn't do that to their room. He's going to come in and go about his business. And they, yeah, they, the defense. Yeah, is and where he'll they go about it. his business. He's not going to disrupt a room that's 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 already set. He you already know he's going to work Taylor right. Hall. <laughs> um, so that one wouldn't surprise me. There is another team looking for a defenseman right now, and that's DP's <laughs> Buffalo Sabers. They're looking for somebody a little different though than I think the, than Jacob Trickman with what they have back out there with Power, Power and uh, Rasmus Dahlin. I think they're looking for someone a little bit more experienced and can bring maybe the little more gritty element. Not saying Jacob Trickman wouldn't be an, an amazing add to the Buffalo Sabers, and I'm sure his name will be bounced around there. I'm just not sure he's the best fit there. I, I agree with you. It's L.A., Edmonton, and Boston. Kenny said for Toronto, they'll trade it all away oh, to get to round two. Toronto, too. We didn't Toronto, even bring up yeah. Toronto. Um, Sorry. And also, I, Michael's made some good points in the chat throughout this conversation just about having respect for Chicker and like versus Jay Crowder, who's sitting out. You know, you mentioned worst case scenario. The real worst case scenario is that Jacob Chicker, you know, protested and sat yeah. out and said, I won't play. Like, that's the real worst yeah. case. And I think we kind of got over that hump this year where, you know, media day, he was a little maybe unhappy but you know like you've talked to him this year he seems 
okay and, and content. Yeah, he's enjoying himself yeah. again. Yep. He's, he's yep. in the role. He looks that like he's, he's having fun. He's in the role that he's meant yep. to play, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, he's, his usage makes sense. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to another defenseman whose name has also been thrown around since the start of the season, and that's Shane Gostisbehere, who is right now out with injury. But like you said, Craig, the injury probably doesn't affect his value on the trade market too much. Do we still see Shane Gostisbehere getting moved? I do. I Listen, the injury occurred five and a half weeks before the trade deadline. It was a four to six week timeline. And everything I've heard is that they're being very conservative with that. So, you know, if this were the playoffs, I think he could come back earlier. So I, th- I think he's going to be fully healthy. I don't think it's an issue at all. And teams have a way of checking on that anyway. You do physical and all that, right? So it's not like that's, oh, they, they pulled one over on him and Shane Gosper's damaged goods. No, that's not going to happen. The other thing that works in his favor, um, his cap hit is $4.1 million, but he's got his, his – most of his salary has already been paid. So the Coyotes might I, – I don't I don't remember. I, I wish David Ludwig were here to tell me. Like, But with retaining a portion of the cap hit, you can do that. He doesn't have much money left to make. I think he's a guy who's easy to move, and he's a specialist. I think he can bring real value to teams. He can still move the puck really well. He's got. He, I know a lot of people in Philly thought that explosive first step was gone. Well, he's shown that he's still got it now that he's healthy. He can move the puck up quickly. He's He really does well on a power play. He can quarterback a power play. They've had him on the flank a lot as a shooter. Um, he can do either role, but I think he's really effective on the power play. So... If you're a cup contender looking for a guy who can bring that specific element, like where you're, say your uh, your power play is struggling, maybe you bring in a guy like Gostas Bear and he can really give you a boost in a key area of the game where you need it. Um, and uh, again, his offensive production since he's been with the Coyotes has been, it's been terrific. It's been top 15 among all defensemen in the NHL since he arrived here. And that's Unreal. saying something on a team that doesn't produce and arri- a lot of offense. And arrived here for literally nothing. Literally nothing. They got him. So I mean, for nothing. them to flip him, that's like to get even more assets. To get even right. more. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and I think this is this is for teams that are looking for that specialist, yep. and it's got to be a team. We talked about Edmonton and they're attractive, you know, they're they're attracted to Jacob Chikrin and that may be a pick for them. I don't see a player like uh, Gosha Spear being a fit in Edmonton. They've already got the number one power play in the league. Barry is clearly the quarterback there. I don't see that they're a team that needs to add that kind of an offensive player. But you look at, at the list of NHL teams that are at that bubble at making the playoffs. Nashville is one to me that they used to be the team with, you know, Roman Osi and Ellis and Ekholm. That used to be a team that you looked at their defenses, their strength. That has gone away from them a little bit. They're towards the bottom. They're 20. 27th in power play right now. Um, they're a team that he fits because he plays that fast, get the puck moving, looking for offense style. You look at the Calgary Flames that we talked about. It's physical, but they're another team struggling on the power play. And Carolina, surprisingly. Carolina is a team that's 22nd in power play in this league right now. That's Their window is open. He moves the puck extremely well and quickly gets the puck up the ice, and he yeah. might be able to help a power play, even their second power play, and help add some offense to teams like that. Two other teams that I wonder about. The Islanders' power play is abysmal right now. Could he be a fit there? Here's another team that lost a puck mover, the Florida Panthers. I don't know what they're thinking about their chances at this point, but they lost Mackenzie Weger in that trade. Could Shane Gossipair be a fit okay. there? Now— the Florida Panthers would really love to have the other guy, the native son, Jacob Chikrin. They just don't have the Heather assets. Room. They have nothing they to give. They don't have the assets yeah. to give. They've so. given it all and away. And that, that brings up another good point, Craig, is when you talk about the Florida Panthers, it's teams now with three weeks to the deadline that are really on that, hey, are we yeah. buying or are we selling? They and may I, wait until the very and end. You, they, so there are teams that aren't even sure at this point what the hell they're going to do. Yeah. Um, and so I think that will open up the market even wider if that e- to race in the East continues to stay tight. I think you will see more teams going, gosh, we better try here because this doesn't happen every year. So I think that's something else to keep an eye on, the injuries and teams as they fluctuate up and down in the lineup. Yep. All right, last of the defensemen, we're going to do two and one, but you can talk about whichever. Josh Brown and Troy Stetcher, two guys who came in who, frankly, I didn't know who they even were before this season. Um, and not only have they come in here to fill a role on this team, they have kind of proven themselves in a way that, as we're sitting here on our trade deadline preview show, talking about them being potential trade pieces, we crowned Josh Brown most likely to be traded on our midseason award show, which now you have you served with Nick Bugstad, um, has taken that trophy away. But what do you guys think about Josh Brown and Troy Stetcher on the trade market? It's interesting. Uh, I don't think there's much of a market for either of these players right now. And it surprises me a little bit because I keep saying this. Teams like depth on defense in particular. 
the analytics people probably don't like either of these players. It, it may be scaring some people off, for all I know. But Josh Brown, to me in particular, he brings size. He brings grit. He's he's that guy that you'd like to have in reserve in case you do have injuries. You know he can play. He's 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 been in a regular role. He's he's playing you know third pair minutes when he's we thought he was going to be drop the gloves either. Yeah, and we thought this was a guy that was going to be scratched a lot, but he's actually carved out a niche for himself here. But if the, there doesn't seem to be a huge market, if there is a market for him, you know, you're probably talking about a mid to late round pick. At that point, is there more value to the Coyotes to keeping a guy like this around to protect? I know Dylan Gunther is not here anymore, but, you know, you look at the way some of their players maybe may have gotten roughed up in past years. It's not happening this year because there's a lot of size in this lineup to protect these guys. And Josh Brown is one of those guys who fills that role. Yeah, I think there are two guys that are, you're right. They're right on that bubble of will they or won't they? I think Stetcher has played better than I was anticipating here. He's been a, been able to move the puck and skate better than I had expected. He's, and he's playing in a defensive role too, which is interesting. 70, like 70 something percent of his zone starts come in the defensive starts. zone. Yeah. So he does do it all. And again, it, it's for, unfortunately for a player like Stetcher, I, I still think there's a, an opportunity that he get traded. Absolutely not saying that because he can do things on both sides of the puck. I just think that guys will get traded higher than him. Yeah. And and I don't know if the ask is going to be Bills going, yeah, I need to do that or disrupt this. I still have to have right. six defensemen or yeah. seven on the ice. Yeah, there's that. With Josh Brown, to me, I kept saying this, that there's a fit for him. And I, I still think that his defensive abilities, his good stick, his ability to defend, his physical play down below the goal line, I still believed he was going to get moved. I don't know if the chatter, to your point, is really out there. Um, for a Josh Brown right now, Again, I think you're looking at a mid to late round pick. Is that worth it? I don't know. That'll be up to Bill. One team to keep your eye on for a player like Josh Brown is going to be the Washington Capitals. Another one where the 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 window was starting to close. They've had a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. And I think they need a gritty, strong defending defenseman. I, I think that's missing from their mix right now. So of all the teams that you look for, he's played in the East. He's got the experience out there. Uh, if any team is looking at a player like Josh Brown, I would think it'd be the Washington Capitals. All right. Well, that's, that's the eight guys. Whew. We're going to next talk about who could come up to replace them. But before we do, you guys are drinking your wow we beers, both of you. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you went for the wow. By the way, thank, Daytime. thank Daytime all. God we got the the big Four Peaks restock. We were yes, all desperate. I was getting grumpy. Desperate. Getting a little worried there. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't. So we love wow. Obviously, you guys are drinking it. It's one of my favorite Four Peaks beer. And if you haven't had a chance to try Arizona's number one wheat ale in wow wheat, then come on down to Old Town Boondocks for the tailgate time machine Saturday <sighs> February 11th. First of all, I love boondocks. Just saying. Um, you can try Four Peaks' newest innovation. It's packed full of Arizona citrus flavor. Perfect for light drinking in the desert sun. And you know what? I think Saturday is like 74 degrees or something. Wow. So it's perfect. Oh, I said wow. Huh. Wow. But you must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. And now, without further ado. <sighs> oh, no. I am. Do we have a spotlight that we can put I on Petey? Passing and this. Don't Pete, read ahead because I'm not going to look no over fun. your shoulder, but he has literally yeah. written yes. this out. Petey. Yeah, yeah. Don't get premature. With that. Oh, oh. Yeah, don't wait, get premature. What? No, oh, your read. No. By the way, this is a new sponsor on our show. And we are very and Derek excited. Derek just walked in at the perfect time. Yeah, we are very we excited him, for, him for PD ad reads to, to be back. So, PD, okay, take it away. I, and and this is I we we've talked and a radio we talk on a microphone all the time. And, and I don't get nervous. I am legit <laughs> nervous for this. And I came prepared. You want to stand behind him while he does I this? I mean, I have, I have come prepared. Derek Montilla, folks. <laughs> I have come prepared. And you can't don't peek if you're going to be on set. Just, we want to see your reaction. Have you done a Roman read yet? I have not done a Roman read yet. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. Espo said he's at the bar. The this gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> oh, boy. We have a new sponsor here at PHNX, and it's Roman. If you don't know Roman, Roman addresses a variety of sexual health needs for men from ED to low T. And with Roman, everything is online with Roman's Men's Digital Health Clinic that is available in all 50 states with licensed physicians. No waiting rooms, no hassle, and most importantly, no embarrassment. Roman sends everything right to your door with free shipping in discreet, nosy neighbor-proof packaging. Now, at this point, are you guys ready? Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Unlike unlike <laughs> Roman, Petey's about to embarrass us. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to so. embarrass a lot of people, including myself. Sorry, Heidi. With the big game coming this weekend, 
I thought this might be the perfect time for Roman at the big game. Before the game starts and you're trying to decide between heads and tails, why not take Roman and have both? In the bedroom, are you that aging quarterback that has a history of deflating his balls before the game even starts? Use Roman to get yourself back to your younger MVP, MVP glory days. Make sure that you get up for the big game so that when you are in the red zone and fading black back and that slot is open, you can successfully get it off to the tight end or to the wide receiver. Because the last thing you want to hear as you're marching down the field and are ready to score is... <laughs> False start, offense, number 69, the play is dead. And then you have your teammates saying, you went early again? Can't you wait for me to snap the ball once? Guess I'll have to kick the ball myself and settle for a field goal. But you can solve that problem with Roman because they offer discreet wipes that help you last up to four times longer. So keep pounding the ground game and penetrating the backfield. Don't fumble at the goal line. Make sure oh, your pigskin breaks the plane <laughs> and has you and your teammate yelling, touchdown! <laughs> to get ready, Roman ready for better sex this Valentine's, go to row.co slash phnx today and get 20% off your entire first order. Order by February 8th for guaranteed shipping in time for Valentine's Day. That's ro.co slash phnx and be better than the big game because the big game only comes once a year. <laughs> Roman. Oh my. Sean is on the floor, by the way. I threw the flag. He threw a flag on the play. On the play. He literally had... Props. Ho! Oh. The bar. The bar has, has been, been, has been re stars. Holy shit! Don't that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, Sean is on the floor. Totri is on the floor. I gotta get back in the, in the Derek stew. Derek was on the floor. I, I gotta work on mine. I have FCC. Teared. That's PD at gophnx.com <laughs> for the fine. I had. Oh my god. Tears on my face. PD, you just made yourself eligible for a first rounder. You have more value than Chickard, and that's what the chat's saying. Thank you. Thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> Glad you're driving the bus, Leah. All right. Well go ahead. Find a transition out of this one. <laughs> I can't and it's I can't say anything that's not gonna be related to that. <laughs> Let's move on <laughs> to which Tucson Roadrunners players we can see get the call up to fill these roles because while it is unlikely that all eight players, I, it's so hard to like be talking seriously again after that, but I'm trying. Um, the, the, all eight players aren't going to get traded that we just right. talked about. But there are going to be but some players gonna... who need to fill that void. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't wait for Craig to do that read. Um, man. Oh, boy. Anyway, <laughs> um, there's going to be empty spots on this roster. And we, we saw it last year. We saw Matias Michelli. That's when he got the call up last year. And now he's been an integral part of this lineup so which guys in tucson and obviously we won't know until we know which exact roles need to be filled but who's kind of who are those group of next guys at? well I, I would say michael carcone is going to get called up after the trade deadline when you can expand rosters you don't have to worry about that sort of thing and after he's absolutely obliterated the single season points record for the tucson roadrunners which he's very close to doing already he may do it in the next weekend series um but beyond him like and i wrote about this recently uh, if you look on the back end, I, I think Victor Soderstrom is going to be one of the first recalls after the trade deadline. They actually like a lot of his development, other areas. Again, you're going to need to see production from Victor Soderstrom with what he does, with his skill set, with what his role would be on a team. He's going to have to produce. It's it, He's not going to be like a depth defenseman. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. And we know Bill Armstrong loves size. So he's really going to have to show something. <laughs> but he's going to get another chance. And he does have another year on his contract after this. But this is this is a... This is going to be a, a telltale look at Victor Soderstrom. Some of this may just be, hey, we're, we're pumping the guy up. We're pumping his tires right now because we want to give him a chance. Um, I'm not seeing it completely at Victor Soderstrom, but I think he's going to get a chance. They love what Va Vladislav Kolyachinuk is doing down there. He's a, he's a very good skating, puck-moving defenseman. He's probably going to get a look. And another guy, and I'm going to pronounce this correctly, thanks to Redeem Verbata, Ronald Knott. 
we'll probably get a look at some point later this season on the back end. Up front, you guys are probably wondering what has happened to Nathan Smith, a guy that they signed or a guy that they brought in, um, you know, last season late in a trade because he wasn't going to sign with the team he was with. Um, he's he's playing pretty well down there, a little bit different role, so it's it's harder to produce, but Nathan Smith probably gets a look. And then Ben McCartney is another guy I'm sure that we're going to get a look at, uh, just a heart and soul kind of guy who brings uh, brings his work ethic to every game. So I, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a, a little mix of familiar with new. And I think when you talked about Carcone, he's going to be back here for sure. Unfortunately for Jan Yannick, with the injury and he's still yeah. walking in a boot, this would be a time where you could see what he could add on a regular basis day after day. And unfortunately, he won't be one of the guys coming up. Hopefully, he's ready to make the AHL playoffs if if – if that team is able to get in. Um, Laurento fan, I, I think, but we've seen him. So I think you're going to go past that. Ben McCartney's a guy that we haven't seen on the back end. I, I agree with you. I think Soderstrom does come first. But then there's two names that we've seen here before. One of them is Cam Deneen, and the other one is Dyson Mayo. Yeah. Like, what, what happened to Dyson Mayo? That he was an everyday defenseman last year for this NHL team, and he's kind of fallen off the map. Well, he, he, honestly, he didn't play well when he was here. I mean, that's that's the simplest explanation. But those those are two guys that... When I look at the, you know, the Coyotes' future, I don't know. I don't know if those guys are part of the future. I, I They've gotten their looks up here, and, and depending on injuries and how many guys they're actually moving out on the back end, like if they move out all four guys that we just talked about, they're going to need a lot of bodies. But I think they'd like to get a look at those other guys beforehand. And I think, um, Craig, what they'll do is I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like a Soderstrom gets here for a long look, especially if they get rid of a couple defensemen and you see him, you know, you, we've talked about four defensemen potentially being trade bait. I think Soderstrom would be one of those that gets a long term stay, yeah. but they may get other guys that shuffle through. Same sure. up front. Like you might be rewarding guys. Like you look at Boko Amama, who got called up last year and it just kind of a reward for, hey, being a good soldier, doing things the right way and being around. I could see that being something they do with the forward position too is have a rotating door. We're so close to Tucson. They also want to make the playoffs. They want that team to be good and successful and learn and de develop by winning. So I could see them making it a revolving door a little bit to see, hey, let's everybody get an opportunity here to see what this is like and then go down and win. So I think you're going to see a few fresh faces if they are pretty active in the trade deadline. And lastly, we saw this with, you know, Jack McBain, Nathan Smith, uh, I mean, Jack McBain was a trade for rights, but college free agents, that's another area the Coyotes can go to fill some of these roles. Craig, I know you've done a little bit of research on this. Yeah. Who is potentially available as a college free agent? Well, there's a lot of names out there and you can you can Google that. Like what I'm interested in here, like a, a lot of these teams, NTA seasons are going to be wrapping up fairly shortly and they're they're available. I think teams have their rights until mid-August, if, if I'm remembering correctly, but in that in that interim, you know, if a team knows, hey, this guy's not going to sign with us, they're probably going to look to make a deal like some of the things that we saw with the Coyotes last year. Some of the big names out there, and and I, I wonder about this guy simply because if if a guy like Carl Vemelka gets traded, what what are you doing in goal next season? Eric Portillo, sorry, DP, doesn't look like he's going to sign with the Sabres, so he could be available right right now in Michigan. Minnesota has a couple defensemen. Ryan Johnson, also Sabres property. And then Jackson Lacombe, who it was reported recently, is probably going to sign with the Ducks at the end of the season. And then uh, Northeastern forward Aiden McDonough, who was drafted by the Canucks, he's available. There's some undrafted guys as well, though, like Jake Livingstone at Minnesota State, Akita Hiroz at, uh, also at Minnesota State, and then Colorado College forward Hunter McCown. Those are guys to watch. Another guy whose rights expire on August 15th, John Farinacci, Coyotes draft pick. Curious what he's going to do. I wrote about this recently as well. He's at Harvard. Uh, the NCAA granted an extra year of eligibility to players because of COVID, but the Ivy League did not. So John Farinacci can not go back to Harvard. He could play another year of college hockey if he decides to. And, and if he does, you can bet that the local team is one of those teams that's very interested in bringing him on board. I'm really curious to see what happens with Farinacci. Yeah, with the college free agents, and I can't speak to this current crop because I honestly don't know, so I'm not going to say something that I haven't seen with my own eyes. So I'm going to stay away from that. But I'm going to say speak from experience that it's interesting to watch how this college free agent market heats up as it gets closer to their seasons being over. And the bidding wars over players that I'm telling you, you will never hear from again.
it just becomes it's so weird, popular, isn't it? Yeah, the, the fight. Remember the Jimmy Vesey stuff? Yeah. Like, oh my God. Gotta get that Best things in sliced bread. But then you look at someone like Adam Fox, and yeah. it sometimes Occasion- works Occasionally out. you yeah. get a guy, but most of the time, yeah. They're dev players yeah. or... Hey, Jack McBain has been great on this Jack team. Jack McBain has been great. Yeah, man, but he, his, his situation's a little different than those free agents because he was a drafted player that didn't sign. So I think that at least they were on somebody's radar at some point. These guys that are undrafted free agents weren't on the radar at any point in time when they were 18, 19 years old. Now you're looking at them and going, we have to have that guy. And now I, I'm, I'm so sorry I can't remember the guy that the Coyotes had to have in 2012 and it was a big bidding war. His name is Joe. And I'm sorry, I don't have his name. I feel horrific. His oh, name is on the back of the banner. So if ago, anybody, buddy. anybody of the diehards that are listening has that banner, his name is on the back, and it'll be the only name that you literally don't know. And you'll go, who? That guy. And and it was it, he was well sought after. And the funny thing is, when you sign a f- college free agent like that, he's got to stay with your club. So he had to stay here in Arizona. And you go, oh, boy. And you thought, oh, this is the big guy. We got to have him around. We traveled with Big Joe uh, for a long time, and it just it never panned out. Yeah. So you, you watch as teams will fight over some of these college free agents right when they're coming down to the wire. Not finding him. I'm, I'm blanking on it. Too. Yeah. So <laughs> it, ago, that'll buddy. be interesting to watch that fight as this goes on. I'll find it before we're done with the show. But there are those guys that people will be falling over, and they just aren't going to pan out the way right. they expected. The ones that can are the ones that drafted and don't sign a la Jack McBain. Yep. So there you have it. It's our overarching preview of the trade deadline. Of course, we'll have a trade deadline special show, uh, much like last year, I'm sure. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if if somebody does get traded before the deadline in the next three weeks, we will talk about it, of course. So stay tuned. I mean, if it's a big name, we'll have an emergency pod. Yes. Jacob Chikrin is the bar for that. So stay tuned. Um, Lots to come. Still three weeks away. But... In the meantime, we got some NHL this week, some NBA, some some not some NFL, the Super Bowl. And if you're, you know, not interested in either team in the Super Bowl, but you want to have a little bit on the line, check out Underdog Fantasy. You can draft teams against your friends just for the big game, which is a really, really fun way to do it, especially since regular season fantasy is over at this point. So play underdog fantasy. Um, you can also play the pick em game for the Super Bowl or any other sport. Just pick player point totals higher or lower. Um, that's another fun way to get really invested in the game, especially if you don't care about the Chiefs or the Eagles. I'm going to check out underdog. And at, at my Super Bowl party, of which you guys did not get invited, I am so sorry. I'm going to do with some drafts. She said the quiet part out loud. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm going to do some drafts with my friends. But did you get an invite? No, I did not. Yes, which I can't you did. T- yeah, I did, actually. Wait, wait, I did. <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I was going to use that opportunity to say it's crazy because okay. Craig invited everyone to a St. Patrick's Day party. And okay, well, it's not my had, party. Had, I'm not having it. At, it's not at my house. Okay, Scott Arnold. Now. Was that his Scott name? Arnold. I was not with Joe. It was Scott Joe. Arnold. We're over here bickering about parties. Sorry, Scott Joe. Arnold. Sorry, I had played it. Scott he was Arnold. backpedaling. Oh, it's not my party. Billy Wait, Thomas. It's not my party. So, it's my friend's party. But you invited Sean. Yes. Okay, see. Do you guys okay. want to come yeah. to my friend? Oh, Let me just now, call him no. on the phone. I just feel like it's a sympathy invite now. Well, you can still join my Underdog Fantasy draft at underdogfantasy.com or download the app. Sign up with code PHNX and Underdog. We'll match your first deposit. Up to $100. And something that's even sooner than all of that tonight. We will be at Illegal Pete's, the PHNX crew, the all-city crew. It's it's a great occasion for a PHNX meetup. Illegal Pete's on mill this Wednesday, February 8th. Starts at 7 p.m. Grab some grub. Enjoy a Four Peaks beer. And come hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to eat Illegal Pete's tonight. Oh, my God. I can't wait to eat the queso. I can't wait to have a margarita or a, and a beer. I just I love Illegal Pete's. I'm so excited. So we hope you all can join us. That's tonight, 7 p.m. Illegal Pete's on mill. Looking forward to it. All right, we have to it's go. It's a good call, Andy Mealy. He wasn't. It wasn't that guy. Oh, he was Scott another Earl. one. Andy Mealy was another college free agent out, out of Miami University. Yeah, Bill Thomas. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we've gone definitely over. We're butting into Greg best Carey. time slot. Yeah. So. Okay, I care about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Just want to throw this out before we go. Uh, just one last thing to say about the Coyotes trade down line candidates. People might be wondering, hey, we've heard some rumors about some of these other guys, like a loss in crowd. No. Like the guys that we discussed, I, I wouldn't expect anybody else to be under consideration other than those guys. And Lawson Krause is definitely not on the trade block. 
I don't care what Maple Leafs fans are saying on Twitter. We need to get Lawson and Kraus. Sorry, he's not available. Sorry, you can't have him and his glorious beard. Petey, any final thoughts? No, that's it. I'm good. That read was thank you. Electric. I miss your read so much, and I just hope not to pre tease too much. I've already half written next the next one. Read. I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, everybody, we appreciate you being here live in the chat with us or watching or listening later. Be sure to like this video, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, leave us a review there and follow Patient Sports across all social platforms. Just unreal coverage all week, Super Bowl week, Radio Row, Coyotes, NBA trade deadline. We've got it all. So become a diehard at gophnx.com to read all of the awesome content there. Grab yourself a shirt from the locker. Follow, just follow Patient Sports on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of it. But you can also follow us at Liam Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at S. Peters Hockey, at Sean underscore DePause. Follow our show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. We'll be back tomorrow live again at 11 a.m. on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, everybody.